What's up, everybody? Welcome back in to the Sports Forum Radio Show here on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports. We are now joined by UFC betting analyst Edward Boylan. Give him a follow at CB underscore UFC on Instagram, man. Good to have you on the show. Big card coming up at UFC 299. How are we doing? Awesome, man. This is exciting. This is exciting. I was worried about that Poirier Saint Denis fight for a second there, but it mm-hmm. looks like it's on. I mean, if it weren't for that Oliveira fight on the 300 card, this would be mm-hmm. the more exciting card. But I think they're pretty evenly matched. Yeah, can't can't wait, man. Going to be a lot of fun here. So many good fights, but we are going to cover the big three fights that we find to be the best and then give you guys maybe a UFC dog, UFC parlay of the week. Should be fun here. So let's start here with Peter Yan and Song Yadong. This one's going to be a fun one. You got Yan coming in, 31 years old, coming off some losses, not looking great right now. You got Song coming in off a big win, a dominant win. Jan is favored here, man, at minus 125. And I find that to be very, very interesting. You got Song Yudong at plus 105. Any way you're looking at the dog here. Yeah, I mean, this is a really this is a really well-matched fight. Song Yudong, man, super dynamic fighter. Absolutely love watching him fight. Definitely picked it up. He's, he's actually been in the UFC for... Uh, almost six years now. He started in, in 2018, despite being only 26 years old. Um, and uh, one of his last two fights, both guys that were um, uh, basically just looking to crack into the top 10. He gate kept them, if you will, after his loss to Corey Sanhagen. No shame in that loss. And then on the other side of this coin, you got Peter Yan, who's 31 years old. He's supposed to be in the prime of his prime. He was the champ, but he's lost three in a row. I don't care what anybody says. He did not lose that fight to Sean O'Malley, but whatever. That's a story for another day. Um, But Marab beat him and Aljo beat him on the rematch. So, you know, Peter Jan's looking at staring down the barrel at four losses in a row. A guy who Mm -hmm. once looked like a top five pound for pound fighter. So it's going to be very exciting. I have to give the edge to Peter Jan here. He's got way more experience in the top five. Uh, but Song Yudong's exciting. I think he's going to give him a real run. And, uh, you know, I kind of lean the over in this one, but I think all around it's a pretty risky play no matter what side you take. It's one of those sit back and enjoy. You're the analyst here, man, but I do have to say I'm really liking this dog money here at plus 105 with Yudong. I just think you're getting a really beat down Peter Yan here. You got a hot Song Yudong. His striking's too good. His power's too good. I know we haven't really seen Peter Yan get knocked out much, but I think this might be one of those times that he's laying there flat after a, you know, late second round, something like that. I would not be shocked. So I'm really looking forward to that one. But let's jump on over to a fight that's probably going to be an absolute banger. Probably my favorite fight on the entire card. Kevin Holland yeah. coming in minus 135 on the money line. Michael Page, kind of a slept on guy in the UFC coming in at plus 115 here on the money line. I know you've said some things about Michael Page in the past. Are people sleeping on him here? Yes and no. I mean, at one point, uh, you make this fight three years ago or five years ago or seven years ago, somebody similar to Holland or Holland himself, I'd take Michael Page all day. He's one of those guys from Bellator that his whole career was overshadowed by the fact that he wasn't in the UFC. He never transitioned to the UFC. He was just always the best dude in Bellator. And, um, I mean, he's he's th- – I mean – He's got the mouth of Holland and the style of Wonder Boy <laughs> rolled in a one. Yeah. I, the two most opposite people, but you love to see somebody like that fight. The truth of the matter is, though, we always talk about when fighters' primes typically are, especially at these middleweight classes like lightweight, welterweight. Usually it's in that 28 to 31 range. That That's usually when people are in the prime. Kevin Holland's 31. Michael Page is 36. They're virtually identical on the stats. Height, reach is pretty close. And I think it's going to be a big, uh, a big talking uh, battle between the two of them. Um, they're both going to be chattering a lot. And, you know, uh, I think we'll see a fun one here. If you're going anywhere, there's a lot of fights on this card where the over makes sense. This is probably one of them. Not a huge play for me, but, man, we're going to see some wild exchanges. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm, I can't wait for this one, man. But I do have to ask you, I know both guys, like you mentioned, both very rangy fighters, both guys, obviously very dangerous fighters. If they get into their groove here, if this does work into a takedown type of fight, it ends up going to the ground and the range doesn't work out here. Do you think Michael Page with his, you know, more of being a technician is going to work better here? Or do you think really he's probably not going to be able to get Holland on the ground? 
Kevin Holland has made insane strides uh, on his ground game. I mean, just when you look back at when he fought Shimaev on literally hours notice, uh, he looked like he got ragdolled, but he really held his own against a guy who was a whole weight class bigger. And, um, you know, and, and it was supposed to be the best wrestler in that weight class in the UFC. He's made some strides since then. And let's not forget one of the greatest jujitsu practitioners of all time in the history of mixed martial arts in Yakare Souza, Kevin Hollum knocked him out from his back and avoided any possible submission there. Granted, later in Souza's career, but still, um, ground game shouldn't be counted out. I don't think this thing has one second of control time in the fight. It's going to be a, wow. a kickboxing, karate, uh, just just wild exchanges affair the whole way through. And a lot of talking, obviously. I know you said a great fight either way, but if you have to give me a winner, hard-earned money, where's it going? Kevin Holland. He's younger. He's in okay. his prime. He's hungrier. He's got something to fight for. Michael Page, I don't think he's got a realistic chance at making it near the belt. Wow. All right. Well, just for fun here, I'm going to go against you here. I like what I'm seeing from Michael Page. <laughs> and as much as I do love Kevin Holland, I feel like I always get him at plus money. So now that he's minus money, I just don't like him as much. But as you're saying, I think he's minus money here for a reason. And uh, I- I'm seeing it here. So, but hey, let's jump on over here. I do want to jump over the Poirier fight really quickly and hop on to the main event because this one obviously is the one everybody's looking forward to. You got Sugar. Sean O'Malley coming in a major favorite here at minus 255 on the money line. Marlon Cheeto Vera coming in at plus 210. A lot of people are saying this is going to be the Cheeto show, not the Sugar show. Cheddar, are you with those people? Oh, man. And the, he, the dude doesn't deserve the, the rematch or, or the title shot, I should say. And Cheeto Vera doesn't deserve that shot. And O'Malley doesn't deserve the belt. So, I don't, I wow. take all of that out of this. You know, Teddy Atlas once said, and it said many times actually, once you win that belt, it instantly makes you 30% better, right? It does mm-hmm. something to your brain, uh, it does something to your mentality. That might be true for Sean O'Malley, but at the end of the day, he wasn't winning uh, that, 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 that first fight at all. I will say O'Malley's made some big strides in his career. Yep. He's definitely gotten better and better and better in each fight. Even that Peter Yan fight, everyone thought, including me, that he was going to get cooked in that fight. And he looked pretty impressive. I don't think he won, he but he definitely won one round in that fight. Um, so, you know, against a guy like that, you know, he's made big strides. Cheeto doesn't look like he's improved that much. He's kind of stayed the same. So for mm-hmm. that line to be plus 220 or wherever it's at now or 210, that, that's insane to me. I, I made this fight plus 140 when it came out for Cheeto Vera. And I thought that if I get O'Malley at minus 150 or better, I'd probably lean that way. Plus 240 on Cheeto Vera. No, give me the dog money. Or 220, Ooh. wherever it's at. Ooh, going to go Cheeto. Look, man, I know he's a <laughs> brawler. Like I know he's dangerous. I know, obviously, he's caught Sean. Technically, he's caught him before. Uh, if you want to draw up kind of how that that led to what happened in that last fight. But overall, man. I just think Sugar Sean, you mentioned his strides, everything he's been doing. But if you really look at the guys he's beating and how he's beating them, it's kind of like we wait. I don't want to bring like Conor McGregor into this, but like back when we said like, oh, he can't stuff the takedown. Oh, he can't beat the wrestler. Oh, he can't do this. Sugar's done that. And he's beat the guys that we all said no chance against this guy, no chance against that guy. If this turns into a standing there brawl boxing match, which guy is going to get the knockout? Um. That's, I think that's how the whole fight's going to go. Uh, again, I don't think there's going to be much control time in this, maybe some cage control time. But, mm-hmm. I mean, let's, there's one thing that's really important here to, to mention because, you're, you know, we're talking about how um, uh, Sean O'Malley is as a fighter, how impressive his wins are. And, you know, you look back at all the old highlights when he was fighting the, the, the unranked guys in the UFC. Um, you know, he's had some impressive knockouts. Chito Vera's fought some real high-level talent. He's never been knocked out. He's never even been knocked down. No one's even mm-hmm. dropped him. He's never even staggered in the UFC. So, yeah, has he lost fights? Absolutely. But no one's been able to crack that chin. And for a guy who thrives off of the, oh, I got you, little knockout punch that, that leads to a follow-up, the guy who couldn't knock out uh, Chris Moutinho, yeah, he's not knocking out Chito Vera. Hey, Chris Moutinho is just a different <laughs> breed, okay? Anybody else would have been knocked out in that fight, man. The dude's face did not look the same when that fight was over. That's, you know that what? Is though, true. Just because, 
you're you're giving Cheeto all this praise. I'm gonna go Sugar Show plus two fifty to get the knockout here uh, and have some fun. So I'm pretty much gonna go against Ooh. you in every fight, but I can't wait. It's gonna be a lot of fun here. But uh, before we get your dog of the day, I know you got a little parlay for everybody. Three legger coming in plus one fifteen, plus one twenty tonight. What are you looking at? Man, so there's three. Like I said, there's a lot of really good overs in, in this uh, on this card. Um, three of the ones that I think have the most value, you put them together, they're at plus money. I'm taking the over two and a half in the main event, O'Malley versus Chito Vera. I think they're going to really need to feel each other out for a while. Typically, that's how rematches go anyway. Make it mm -hmm. two boxers. The odds of that happening are even higher. Then I'm taking the over two and a half in Gamrot Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos and, and Matos Gamrot are not the same stylistic fighters, both high-level wrestlers, both have an okay – well, Gamrat has an okay, pretty good uh, stand-up game. Dos Anjos is a great stand-up, but he's starting to fade in his career a little bit. This is going to be a war that's going to go the distance. And then I'm taking the over two-and-a-half in the Sermonara barber fight. For those of you who don't know, uh, Caitlin Sermonara got married, so her name was mm -hmm. Caitlin Chikagian before this. Uh, Macy Barber is an up-and-coming prospect. I've long said for years – Caitlin Chikagian <laughs> by decision. Death taxes Caitlin Chikagian by decision. She wins every fight Ooh. by decision. She never gets knocked out. Uh, Barber, I think she's going to get stifled a little bit by, by some, uh, some top-level talent, and she's not going to be able to land those big bombs that she usually can. So, yeah, give me the over two and a half in all three of those, and you can get it at plus 115. That's a squad ride, folks. We are all going to jump on that one. So good luck to you there. And I know we got to get to a quick break here, man. But first, I need your dog of the day. Who's going to cash me out here? Man, I, well, it's the battle of the Michals, right? Michel or Michel or however you say it, Pajeda and oh, Michal yeah. Oleg Jacek. Um, Look, it's a close fight. It's not a huge underdog. Give me Oleg Jacek plus 130. This guy has ran through light heavyweights and is coming down to middleweight because he wasn't cutting weight before Pajeda has gone up from welterweight to middleweight and only has one fight at middleweight. The difference is going to be huge. Oleg just got a great chin. I think Oleg Shechuk pulls this one out in a 29, 28 across the board. Ooh, love it, man. Best of luck to all you guys there. Give our man Cheddar a follow on Instagram, Instagram predominantly at CB underscore UFC and for all you tw Twitter people out there at Cheddar betters, the best UFC betting analyst in America. Guys, go give him a follow. Cheddar, thanks for tapping in, man. Best of luck on UFC 299.